Hey everybody, it's Jenny from Norman Ness Wright. I've been talking about indoor air quality for the last several videos. I think it's time to change to a new topic. So let's talk about air distribution. I'm gonna start with what is throw. So let's get started. The throw distance is how far the air jet moves measured from the center of the diffuser or grill. So the throw would be measured from here. As the air moves out of the diffuser, it'll also start to drop. So in side view, it may look like this. Throw is measured at certain velocities. Per ASHRAE, we catalog throw at 150 feet per minute, 100 feet per minute, and 50 feet per minute. You'll see catalog data look something like this. What this is telling you is that five feet from the center of the diffuser, the velocity is 150 feet per minute, seven feet it's 100 feet per minute, and 13 feet it's 50 feet per minute. Another way you might see this is T150 equals five, T100 equals seven, and T50 equals 13 feet. One important thing to remember is that all catalog data is taken in isothermal conditions. This means that the supply air is the same temperature as the room air say 75 degrees supply in a 75 degree space. Testing in isothermal conditions allows us to have repeatable, comparable throw data, but it's not typically how systems operate. Luckily, there are some rules that can help you correlate isothermal catalog data to throw distances in actual applications. So let's make some room and talk about those. Let's start with 150 feet per minute throw, T150. Velocities of 150 feet per minute or greater are temperature independent. That means that the throw of a diffuser is the same at 150 feet per minute, regardless of whether it's isothermal, cooling, or heating air going through it. So going back to our 5713 throw example, this means that 75 degree air, 55 degree air, or 90 degree air will have the velocity of 150 feet per minute at five feet from the diffuser. So let's talk about T100. The 100 foot per minute catalog throw number is useful because in cooling, the 100 foot per minute isothermal throw is equal to 50 foot per minute cooling throw for a free jet or 100 foot per minute cooling throw if it's moving along a wall. So let's draw this in up here. T50 for free jet or T100 in cooling if it's on the ceiling. Now let's move this over and look at why it matters if it's moving along a surface or not. The difference in throw for a free jet versus a jet moving along a surface like a ceiling is that the free jet can induce air on both sides, but a jet on the ceiling can only induce air on one side. Induction is when room air is mixed into the supply air stream. Induction of room air slows the jet down and shortens the throw. 50 feet per minute is important because ASHRAE recommends that the airflow in the occupied space be no more than 50 feet per minute to maintain comfort. About five years ago, ASHRAE 55 actually changed this to be less than 40 feet per minute for comfort, but the catalog data is still at 50 feet per minute. I've drawn the throw coming out of the diffuser and moving along the ceiling and possibly down along a wall into a space kind of like this. ASHRAE defines the occupiable space as the area outside of this. It's usually defined as about one foot off the wall. You don't want to put your occupants in the area where the throw is greater than 50 feet per minute because they'll likely be uncomfortable. They make a little bit of room. So for grills, you'll also see data for specific spread angles, usually 0, 22.5, and 45 degrees. This has to do with whether the grill blades are set to throw directly forward, at a zero degree spread or out towards the side to widen the spread to 22 and a half or 45 degrees. So the zero degree throw would look kind of like this, where T50 comes straight out the front, T100 is a little bit wider version of that. As you start spreading the throw, you get kind of three separate little jets of T150 and T100 surrounds that. And then at 45 degrees, it's even shorter and wider. Let me scoot this up a little bit. So as the spread goes up, the throw is shortened. This is because at 22 and a half and 45 degrees, 
There's more induction into the jet, so you have shorter throws. Now let's talk about air patterns. The two basic airflow patterns that a diffuser can have are circular and cross-flow. The circular pattern has a 360 degree airflow from around the diffuser. It doesn't necessarily come from a round diffuser, the air just comes from the entire perimeter of the diffuser. A cross-flow pattern looks just like it sounds. Air flows in four individual jets, or you could have two or three jets or even one if it's a two or three-way or one-way diffuser. Circular pattern diffusers have more induction and shorter throw than cross-flow patterns. Because of this, they're not recommended for heating because it's harder to get the heat into the occupied zone. Cross-flow air patterns tend to have a higher drop than circular air patterns. I won't go into drop today. We'll cover that in a future video, though. One last thing on air patterns. If you have a diffuser in your office and you take a second to look up at it, is there dirt on the ceiling around the ceiling diffuser? You often see dirt in the corners of a cross-flow diffuser. We call this smudging. The dirt isn't coming from your diffuser. It's coming from the induced room air. It's actually showing you that your diffuser is inducing air in the airstream just like it's supposed to. As supply air comes out of the cross-flow diffuser, room air is being induced into these corners. And since there's no airflow coming out of the corner, the dirt is induced and can collect in the corners. Circular pattern diffusers don't usually have smudging since their air flows from all around the diffuser. Let's bring everything back up on the screen now. So that covers the basics of throw. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.